Hi, Planet Wayne here with another quick video on working with the Attack of the BT mod pack. Now today's video is going to be going through how to create this illuminated billboard that I've got behind me here. Um, now we'll be using the uh, programmable Redneck controller from the Mine Factory Reloaded mod. Um, we've also got the um, Project Red illumination lamps, um, which are obviously making up the uh, flashing colours and so on. And we're also using the Forge microblocks to uh, do the detailing out for the lettering and such like. Um, so what I'm going to do is just break out into a bit of a speed build. Um, there's not too much going on from uh, a building point of view, just a little bit to be mindful of with the um, redneck cable. Um, and again, I'll show you that as I'm going along. Uh, and then when we get to the end, I'll go through the actual programming logic that exists in the controller and um, just show you how all that's put together. So um, on that note, I'll uh, get this thing back into day mode and uh, start off on that build. Okay, that's the basic layout of the lamps on the back. Um, literally, it's just a frame with the um, with the Project Red Net illumination lamps um, in the background there. Again, colours completely up to you, whatever the design is that you're trying to achieve with this. Um, but uh, hopefully you will see where this is going in a second, but um, I'll carry on with the build now. Okay, so what I've got going on here, um, the whole of the lamps are completely enclosed in this redneck cable. Uh, we've still yet to do the colours on that. Uh, one thing to note as well, um, the redneck cables automatically made a connection to the, uh, the lamps because obviously they can um, accept redstone straight off. Uh, but there's no connection onto the frame that we're using here. So again, another visit with the crescent hammer all the way around just to make sure that we've got a connection on each of these blocks. And the same for this strip across the back here. Um, it's up to you whether you want to use more redneck cable, I just found it simpler. Um, and again, you might want to incorporate this into the design. Uh, is to just put another strip of um, blocks of whatever it is that you're building from here uh, and again just make a connection from this uh, redneck cable. I mean typically this is actually four high in so much as um, number of blocks that are behind the sign as such. Um, so with only um, the one strip of uh, redneck cable there we've got no way of making a connection to this uh, second row of blocks. So um, what I'm doing here is, as you can see, I've just got another set of uh, blocks in the um, frame uh, block that I'm using and we just need to make a connection again to those to uh, make sure that that passes the signal through. And then by the fact that we're powering that one, that also then powers the block that's in front of it and so continues the, uh, the light pattern on the front there. One thing to watch out for, um, obviously these corner blocks, um, if we're using all the same colour and f to be fair most of them will be, um, these blocks here on the corners um, 
it doesn't matter if there's two connections but I'll show you a little trick at the end as to uh, one of the additional features that I've got on this to uh, um, that does mean that we need a, a different color on here so um, just for this one I'll leave that one as is but um, the tedious part of this now is actually to go through and put all of the colors for each of these cable block uh, connections that we've got um, now the way that it works is if I just go back to the back of this one uh, we've just got a cycling set of colors so it's literally uh, based on the size of the uh, of the area that you're covering I figured out that we can use four colors in rotation so we've got white uh, blue magenta and orange and they're literally the first fo uh, first four colors on the um, on the selection uh, and with that I can go through and just change all of the colors on here just so we're repeating that pattern so it'll be um, white orange magenta and blue um, just going around in a repeating pattern um, until we get back to the start so uh, I'll just code up that one now It was around about this section here where I realised I'd made a bit of an error in the uh, sequence of colour codes around the outside block. So uh, instead of sitting through the whole thing where I'm recoding the uh, outside strip here, I'll just cut to the uh, next section and we'll pick it up from there. Um, these blocks on the inside face here, uh, these are all on the yellow channel, so I uh, just need to go through and alter that one. Okay, that's all the wiring done on the back. Um, all that's left to do now is get our lamps on the front um, to create this matching ant effect um, that we've got around the outside of the uh, outside of the borders here. Again, all of these are done from the uh, Project Red Illumination lamps, so um, complete choice of colours is obviously down to whatever design that you've got going on. Um, so I'll just get those lamps placed on there now. That's all the lamps placed, all we need to do now is um, put our lettering inside the uh, design here. With the basic lettering done, all we need to do now is add any final touches and uh, add any extra detail that we need to do to uh, make it look good. Well, that's the basic design done. All we need to do now is code up the controller and get this thing flashing.
just making sure all of the uh, marching ants are going the right way and uh, we're not missing any colours. That all seems to be working fine. As you can probably see we've got two controller switches. One switches on the, um, the outside illumination and then the next one actually then turns on the, um, the flash that's in the background there. So again, go to town on the design, obviously uh, whatever sees fit to um, for the sign that you're trying to do. Um, and that's that for the basic build. Right, we're in the programming interface now of the uh, Redneck controller. Um, now as you probably know, the um, Redneck controllers come with a maximum of six slots um, without any upgrades. Now I've got seven slots in here and um, typically we're actually only using for the basic design is five slots, but I'll show you what I'm doing with the, with the last two uh, when we get there. Um, but starting off on slot one, what we've got in here is just a very simple uh, wave or square wave timer, um, which has a PD value set against it of five. Now that's basically how fast the lights are going to flash around the outside of your border there. Um, obviously decreasing this makes them uh, flash faster, increasing it will uh, obviously make it flash slower. Now typically it's going to depend on the um, server that you got connected to or um, anything else that's going on there as to how or what the optimal value of that's going to be. Um, so obviously play around with that depending on the speed that you want the lights to uh, flash around the outside of your, um, outside of your billboard. Um, now the output for that is being put into variable zero and that's the thing that gets used in the next uh, slot to uh, increase on a counter that we've got going on. Right, slot two is that counter and that's taking the input from um, or the increment on variable zero so every time that pulse fires on that uh, on that wave that we've got on slot one that increases the counter. Now we've got a maximum count value on here of four because we're only using four colors or four channels around the outside of our design. Now if you needed to um, increase on that or if you wanted to add more channels or um, more lights in the sequence as such then we'd need to make sure that that value also gets reflected with however many that you've got used there. Um, now from the output point of view um, our output is going into variable one and when this finishes a whole uh, cycle, when it gets to that value of four, we're also using the, the Q output on here to set variable two. Now that gets used to toggle on and off the background of the uh, billboard. So uh, again, that's in a future slide that we get to, to, to trigger that with. In slot three, we're using this DMUX 16 out analog uh, function. Now we're taking the input from a uh, lever that's coming on the left face on the white channel and that basically turns the thing on and off. So um, obviously you want to turn your sign off at the end of the day or when you've finished or whatever um, and that's the thing here that turns off the output of the controller to stop the lights flashing in sequence. Um, and to get the lights flashing in sequence this is where we're using variable one that was coming off our counter. Um, and that cycles through in order, depending on the content of variable one, is dependent on which one of these four colours that we're using on the output here. Now, as I said earlier, depending on your design, you can actually go all the way up to uh, 16 colours in total, 0 through 15. Um, but for the um, geometry of the sign that we're using, um, I actually managed to get away with just using four. So these all correspond to the uh, back of the, um, the border that's on the sign. Uh, and again, if you remember when we were colour coding the uh, cable up, that's literally just white, orange, uh, magenta and light blue um, in order. Uh, around the edge of the um, uh, around the edge of the billboard there. Slot four is a T flip flop or toggle flip flop. Now the way that that works is we're taking uh, an input clock from variable two, which if you remember is coming off the counter, um, and that gets triggered every time the counter reaches a full cycle. So every time we get to to four, it'll send out a pulse on on variable two or into variable two and that's what we're using here to toggle this flip-flop. Um, there's just a, a constant value of one in, in the T slot there and as I say the clock is actually coming from variable two off the, uh, off the counter. Now the output for this is going into variable three and variable three gets used a little bit later on to um, to turn on and off or to flash on and off the, um, the background color that we've got on the, uh, on the billboard. And slot five is where we're making use of that variable. So we're, we're basically using an AND gate, a two input AND gate. 
Uh, this is uh, using another control lever that we've got on the side here um, from the left hand face on the yellow channel uh, and we're ending that with the content of variable 3. Now if you remember variable 3 is coming off that um, off that T flip-flop so when the when the uh, lever on the yellow channel is 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 on and we've got something in variable 3 that's when we're sending that to the output on the upper face on the yellow channel. Uh, and again if you remember from that that's all of the colored blocks that are in the background of the of the sign there. So this is how we get that flashing on and off um, and in combining that with a lever again gives us the ability to turn that part of the sign on or off um, again depending on what we're trying to do. Um, so that's the basic uh, coding of the uh, controller. Uh, again we've got our two levers here to turn each of the things on and off and um, that's our basic functionality from there. Most of the billboards that I've ever seen have always got some dodgy lamps or some bad connections on them somewhere or another, either with a lamp that's out or, um, as we've got here, flashing indicators that just aren't working in sequence with everything else. Um, and that's quite an easy cheat that we've got with the last two programming slots on that controller. Um, and all we've got to do that is um, we made an adjustment or... To, to get that to work I made an adjustment to the connections onto here to use um, a different colour that we're not using yet in our sequence um, and then there's a couple of additional programming uh, logic steps in the controller just to make that happen so I'll go over and make the change over to our new sign and show you how to do that in the controller now obviously you can make this section as big or as small as you want it to be or spread out the um, the number of faulty lamps that you've got. Um, the one thing just to be mindful of is if you've got any connections that are coming on these corner blocks from um, both the yellow and the green then that'll effectively be when either of them is on. So um, you just might want to take off a connection on that one just so you've got that just permanently flashing along with the rest of them. But as I say that can be as big or as little as you need it to be or as spread out and as uh, using as many blocks as you want to do with that. Now the way that we're actually getting that to work is here in slot 6 and as I say this is completely optional if you just want to stick with the uh, the standard configuration of the uh, Rednet controller then um, you won't be able to do this because typically um, we're also using the ability to turn this on and off which is why we're using two slots. So to actually get the random uh, flashing sequence we're actually using a randomizer, um, a digital randomizer and we're sticking the output of that into variable 4. And that's basically used in our last slot here where we've got another two input AND gate um, that takes input from variable 4 uh, and it is ANDing that with the left face yellow channel which is our on off switch for the, for the background if you remember uh, and that's where it get pushed into this upper, uh, upper channel on the green channel um, to put the output. So again, simple addition to that just to give you that authentic look of a broken billboard typically. Um, as I say, we're using uh, a randomizer to get us our random pulses um, and then anding that with our on-off lever to uh, give us the simulated broken output. So again, neat little addition if you need to. Um, and that's all the uh, programming logic that we need to, uh, to make that work. Okay, that's it for me for now, Planet Wayne. I'm just signing off on this one and hope you enjoyed the video. Again, likes and comments much appreciated below and I shall see you in the next one. Thanks a lot and bye for now.